morning. Welcome back to O'Neill Family Farms. I'm your host, Rob O'Neill. Some of the questions I get, are we from O'Neill, Nebraska? No, that's our last name. So uh, for those of you new to the channel, Let's see what kind of rain we got up here. Mm. Not quite 30 hundreds. We've been kind of holding out. We were predicted to get some decent rains last night. It's just they didn't quite amount to what we thought. We got rain, but not enough. So we were kind of holding out on starting these till today if we had to. But um, so I guess we'll get them started. So it looks muddy and it would probably be fine to hold off till today or till maybe tomorrow. The only thing is right now our crops are pretty much in peak water use right now. Kind of starting to go down the backside curve according to our agronomist. Well, I've got some deer ahead but this camera won't be able to pick it up. So I mean this corn, you know if the sun comes out and gets dry, I mean it's using 30, 35 hundredths of uh, rain or moisture a day. So. It's important to kind of keep that profile built up a little bit and also, uh, yeah, just don't let it get behind. <laughs> on to the next pivot. I'll just go around and start starting some of these pivots on these south wells that I have and then I'll kind of go around check the other pivots that I got in different locations. I know one, I, I talked to a, or I texted a, a buddy that lives close to a pivot that I got way up north and he said it, it got almost an inch, so uh, I won't worry about that one, but um, I kind of got some east of town that I'll go look at and see if I need to get those started as well, but they've been a little wetter. These on the south ones, one, my biggest area, it's just been a little drier down here, so uh, I'm gonna go around and start those. I won't film all that because you've kind of seen those in my last videos, so uh, that's what I'll be doing now anyway, and then we'll kind of go in and uh, maybe talk a little bit more about injecting uh, fungicide through these pivots because I've already started uh, injecting some of these fungicides. Actually, this half I injected some fungicide through the pivot. This one I used. Um, the product I used on this one was Preaxor. I've, I've been using just a few different ones just to see if we get any bounce from them. And uh, I'll kind of talk about a little bit more about that after I uh, maybe get in a better spot. So we'll keep moving on. So I started a bean pivot and then uh, it went a little ways and then it stopped. And I went down there and it looked like it might be a gear bike because I've seen uh, mud slick on one tire instead of the other. So sometimes that's a warning that uh, one tire spinning and one's not. Well, the problem happened to be one tire is just flattened off the bead. So luckily there's some uh, spares kind of sitting over here. I'll load up, put it on the trailer. This isn't the field here. I got to go over the hill, but I'll take it over there. And I'm thinking I might just drag it in with my four wheeler instead of taking the tank off because I got chemical in that tank, but we'll, we'll figure it out guys. Bueno. This is even one of those dumb ones that has the nuts on the back side. Here's the tube. Nope, ain't gonna fix itself. Ah, 
get another battery. You guys can wait here, I'll go get another battery. So these are an old design. And it's kind of like when they were designing it, they weren't thinking about in-field installs. Because now all of them have um, lug studs. Like the bolts come out and then you just slide it on over top. Well this, you gotta have it just perfect to line those up and get the rim just right. So it stinks on these to put these back on. So I might have to fast forward this because it might take me a while. Sometimes I do it. Doesn't take very long, sometimes you get it set and it's just, you can't, it's hard to find, so. What I'm doing is kind of digging it down, trying to find the right height. Might have a winner. Well, I got that done, but I can't find my chain, so I can't drag it out right now. So I'm gonna go look for it. If not, I'll come back with another chain and drag it out, but geez, I don't wanna leave a chain out there, especially with beans. The reason why is because we run our heads on the ground and I'd hate to swallow that up with a bean head. Must be losing my mind. So I gotta line it back up since it kicked it out. And then I'll kick it back forward and should be good to go. Usually you only have one problem at a time, but sometimes you can have multiples and that really freaks you out. Well, not freaks you out, but actually kind of torques you off. So oh, it's holding. I'm gonna flip it back forward. All right, I guess while we're out here, we might as well talk a little beans, but as you can see down here in the bottom, they're getting fairly tall. Right up to my navel, right here. Now, just to emphasize, tall beans don't necessarily equate to higher yields. This is kind of like the height I like them to stop at, maybe because they get too tall and then kind of late August when you start watering them and stuff with these pivots they'll start laying over just because of the weight of the water will start holding them down and do goofy things and things like that but right now we're almost getting to be August and so it's setting pods pretty good so as you can see right here looks like they're setting quite a few there's a few fours on here when you see a four that's a good sign it tends to be more kind of in the middle part of the bean and then as you get to the top it's still starting to set a few and fill them so i guess we'll see for those of you new to the channel we plant them on 30 inch rows we don't do anything really special with planting sometimes we'd like to experiment with 15 inch but you just have to buy a new planter then and so far we've been getting along okay the biggest issue right now with beans is weed control and uh, we kind of gone over the whole uh, dicamba dilemma and stuff like that. But um, no, we don't. We haven't used any fungicide or anything like that. Um, nothing's really called for it. At least the agronomist hasn't said. I wouldn't even know what I'm looking for, I guess. So that's why we hire an agronomist. Because there's so many different kinds of diseases that can pop up. Things like that. So most of the information I get, we kind of... I get from other people around me and things like that. So... Uh, they're looking really good. I didn't know if they'd get this tall or not because they, they always kind of seem like they wait and then near the end of July they'll just kind of balloon out and stuff. But still got a few, um, I don't know if you pick this up on the camera, but there's a few minor yellow spots on this pivot. Not bad. It, it filled in rather nice. Um, over there there's a few yellow spots. But we think it's kind of the iron close. This maybe leftover tie-up from atrazine or something like that. 
it always looks worse at the beginning of the year but at this time of year it all kind of takes off and gets going and they they tend to do fine and so you don't usually notice those spots it's just more of an eyesore than anything so nope hopefully i've chain turns up find the motor or find the motor i can pull that tire out of here before at least harvest maybe i'll just set a flag by it call it good we'll call this job done move on to the next new day here i uh, was leaving the house and putting on uh, deodorant but my old deodorant ran out and so i got a different flavor on and it kind of smells like i'm just sitting near somebody else any of you ever had that problem this pivot is the half that I've treated for fungicide already. Um, the thing we got now, according to our agronomist, is some of our leaves are getting bacterial leaf sprite blight, I believe. And so what that is, is it's a bacterial disease. Fungicides won't help that. But sometimes what can follow along is like other gray leaf spots. It just kind of makes your plant a little more susceptible. So we're trying it out see if uh that will help any of this you can just kind of see right here different things you'll get on leaves the biggest thing is you don't want your leaf to get covered in all kinds of diseases because that's what pulls in your photosynthesis and especially the ones above the ear because they're going to grab all of it especially the ear leaf it's kind of a direct feeder to the ear um we're done we're wrapping up pollinating some of our longer seasons um, might be pollinating a little bit but um when your silks kind of start to turn brown like that, that means you're you're pretty much done. A lot of them will be uh, white when they come out. This pollen will drop right here and pollinate the corn. Each one of these silks will uh, will pollinate an ear or a kernel. So this corn's a little shorter right here by the road just because of compaction. But okay, so we're here at the well. I just shut it off. It was running. Um, I got to plug into that panel box over there. That's where I'll get the power for this. And uh, what I got to do is kind of figure out how fast I want to run this pivot. Usually, typically, or typically when we put on fungicide, you kind of want to run it as fast as you can. Uh, just so you're not over watering when you're doing it. And so I'm going to figure out how fast this thing can go in a circle. And right here it says I can do... According to this, I can do a 11 and a half hour circle. And so that's what, I might back it off just a little bit. I'll probably do a 12 hour circle. That way it's not having to run at 100%, but darn near at it. So I'll figure that out. I won't do all the math for you. That's kind of boring, but basically what I want to do is figure out how many ounces, I'm gonna, how many ounces per acre I want to apply and how long it's gonna take and I'll calibrate this one. This is the first time I calibrated this one. Usually I get them set and I kind of leave them for the rest of the year. That way uh, I'm not always having to change it. But on this, this is how you calibrate it. You got a calibration tube. And I believe it was 63 millimeters. Is that milliliters? Not millimeters. Um, is what it takes per minute to do one gallon. And then so I kind of go off of that to see how... Uh, how much I'm actually putting on but this is kind of how you adjust it and then you kind of got your uh, pulse or your stroke and and things like this this is an agri inject one and so that's kind of how you do these so I'll kind of get that started and uh, fill this up I want to get everything plumbed in first I'm kind of explaining this first because this motor is going to be loud and I don't know if I'll be able to explain it very well but I'll hook everything in get the mister valve which is this is the mister valve. This is what's going to pulse and uh, I don't know why I made you guys jump, but it'll pulse out of here and create a mist in that in that chem valve right there. And I want to have everything pressured up so everything's going to be applying the right rate when I'm calibrating this because if I just do it out here, it's it's a little different when you after you put it in there. So uh, you want to have everything running and pull pressured up that way you get the right calibration on these and so that's what I'm gonna do. I'll start it up and uh, oh, and actually, just the other day we had all we came out here and actually inspected this again for this year. You have to have these inspected every three years by the um, the NRD districts. Um, they they come out here just to make sure that valve isn't leaking back, basically, and making sure all your uh, wiring's right. Because another thing is you want this you don't want this to be able to run while your pivot's still running without water going through it or vice versa. So uh, that way you're not 
fill in your uh, pipe full of uh, just fertilizer or, or chemicals. So you kind of want to have everything wired up so it's safety right. So when if you get stuck, kicks out, it kicks everything out. So that's another thing. So I'm going to get everything set up here and uh, we'll get ready to rock and roll. For some reason, this one was sucking air. And it wasn't pumping right when I got it all pressured up. I got in the water. So out here at a field my dad usually checks and it's a little further north. But you can see here we got some hail damage on this uh, a little earlier. And it's most of the leaves except for a few of the top, top leaves up here. I don't know if you can see it, but they're undamaged because they came out after the hail. Which is a good thing because that's usually what grabs a lot of your sunlight and pulls it in. The only thing we're trying to do here is when you kind of get these shredded up, it's just like kind of cutting up your skin a little bit. There's more susceptible to maybe diseases and stuff like that. So that's kind of why we're trying to um, maybe try some fungicide out here and see if it kind of helps keep it as healthy as it can. Because what can happen is, you know, your stock will deteriorate and just standability issues and things like that. So, which is what we want to avoid because last year we picked a bunch of down corn. We don't want to do that again. So, uh. That's kind of what we're doing out here with the injection system. But yeah, that injector or the chemigation unit called Insectigator. I don't know why it went bad or I'm not sure what's going on. I think it's sucking air somewhere. I just got to go reseal all the fittings or make sure it's not cracked somewhere. And uh, I just brought another one out and replaced it with it. But it's kind of hard to talk when you're by that well. So I thought I'd tell you guys that this year. So let's go on to... Let's get out of here before something else breaks. So today is a really nice day out. It's probably upper 70s right now. Obviously you can still sweat in a cornfield. Most prettiest thing in the world. That's your, your call. What do you think? You like corn? Uh-huh. Yeah. Awesome. Everyone's pretty watery. Yeah, we want big ones. Thanks, bud. Oh, you wanted mommy to have that one? Switch ya. I think he's gonna get the camera out of my face. <laughs> so that sweet corn we just husked was actually Roundup Ready sweet corn. That's the first time we've planted that this year. So uh, weed control was a little bit easier to do in it this year just because we could kind of use the same herbicide program we put on our uh, our regular field corn. but. I guess we'll see how it tastes because that's what it's all about. But sweet corn, the most of the time, tastes pretty good. Hey guys, I'm gonna probably wrap it up here, but before I go, um, I just wanted to ask you guys a question about apparel. I've gotten a question from a few people about, you know, t shirts and stuff like that. I was just going to leave a poll under my community tab uh, in my uh, channel page or sometimes it'll come up if you su subscribe already. But I was just curious to see if any of you guys would be interested and how many wouldn't be interested and stuff like that in apparel just to kind of get a numbers idea. Yeah, if you would just uh, go to that or maybe I don't know if I can put a link below, but if I can, I'll put it a link below and just go to that. And uh, uh, yeah, I'd like to hear from you on that. But also, before I go, is I'd like to give a shout out to another channel. Um, she's already blown up. She's way larger than my channel already, but uh, I just like to help out Nebraska agriculture. Um, and she's a young lady that's starting out ag farming with her dad and uh, her boyfriend, I believe. And uh, yeah, they're just kind of down the road east of us, still kind of in south central part of the state, um, but they're in a little bit different part. I want to keep checking out Nebraska agriculture. I suggest you go down and check out her channel and stuff like that. So. I uh, highly recommend it. Yeah, and if you keep getting bored and want more, there's all kinds of farming channels out there right now. So uh, about anything that you want to watch. So I appreciate you stopping by this one, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one, guys. Thank you.